Hi, this is John with Soft Cell Video Productions, and today we're going to show you the proper use of JB Weld. The mixing is not so important as the preparation of the mating surfaces. It's about a 50 50 mix, it's a little off, not that big of a deal. But if you have any oil whatsoever on the mating surfaces, it will not stick. So I use a combination of three different solvents to remove all oil residue so that we get a good bond between the mating surfaces. So let's get started. This is a oil port assembly which was snapped off and we're going to glue it together. When it broke it bent some of the components so we're not going to get an exact fit. But that means it's even more important that we get this absolutely positively clean. First we use gunk and we're going to soak the components in that and once that's done we're going to use a toothbrush to clean off any residue. It's still going to leave a petroleum residue from the gunk carburetor cleaner and parts cleaner. In between the gunk cleaner and the acetone wash you might want to use hot soapy water to clean off the mating surfaces. And while it will not remove all of the oil, it will remove a good portion of it so that when you go to use your acetone, you can use your acetone sparingly. You can also use it selectively, as you'll see. But hot soapy water and also to get into those nooks and crannies. Now it's very important that you keep the exposure to the acetone to a minimum on these parts. And the reason why is acetone will soften almost any type of plastic known to man. Basically, you just apply liberally and get all of the residual oil you can possibly get out. This first mating surface is clean. We move on to the second one. Now, I don't know if you can see it, but there's a crack right here. So what I'm going to do is rough that up with a little sandpaper and add more structural adhesive there to prevent any further cracking. And acetone dries with no residue. Now you see that color there? That means it's absolutely clean and free from any oil debris. And that's what you're looking for. Okay, all mating surfaces have been cleaned to my standard of perfection. So, let's mix up some glue. JB Weld comes in two components. Hardener and steel. You want to mix these as close to 50-50 as you can. You mix until you get a very, very dark gray consistency. So the first thing you want to do, you want to use one of your digits to mechanically coat the mating surface, one of the mating surfaces. That's the best method I've come across and the most effective. One mating surface is completely covered. Now for the other mating surface. All mating surfaces have been covered. Now the best way that you can, you match the surfaces. And like I said, they've been compromised. So we're not going to get a perfect match. But we're going to get close. I have a little trick up my sleeve. And that is a carpenter's wood block lock. Okay, that time we got a very good lock. And it would appear that we have a very solid connection. That concludes this episode on how to use JB Weld. But it might as well have been any kind of epoxy or industrial adhesive. The main thing is that you always have a very clean surface that is oil free, debris free, and if it's overly smooth you might want to put um, a brush of 80 grit sandpaper over it to get added traction. As an added note, I'd like to say allow 48 hours 
for full cure. That finishes up this episode on how to properly use JV Weld. Thanks for watching and have a great day.